What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Gamers for Life podcast, where each and every Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, we're discussing that gaming shit. I'm one of your hosts, Darrell. With me is my co-host, Arturo. What's going on, bro? Nothing much, man. Rocking a rocking a Modelo Nanaha tall boy and celebratory of the Vikings going. F- Vikings are officially five and zero, oh, so it's a great day. They beat the J- they beat the Jets and Aaron Rodgers in London. Wow. Um. So, yeah, man. It's a, it's a great time to be a Vikings fan. Before the start of this game, I don't know the new stats, but before the start of this game, um, we had the number one uh, defense and number one offense. So, Look who, at you, who, who, who over, fucking knew? Look at you jumping over from the Rams to be a full Vikings fan now. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> both. I'm both. Let the re- in fact, in fact, I'm not sure if I sent you pictures, Drill. I, let the record show. I met a previous Vikings player while wearing a Rams jersey. So I was at a work event watching the pa- watching the Vikings beat the Packers. It was a really close game. And there was a like it was like there just happened to be like a charity event going on at this bar. Turns out this Vikings player was like a co-owner of it. So thankfully when I wore my Rams jersey because the Rams were playing the Bears, um I had my Vikings hat on and so I took a picture with him. But yeah, it's it's not it's not minimally "quote unquote" a bandwagon when you just by definite by legal definition have a new home team. So I think but the I get Bears it. Whoop, I think the Bears whoop, whooped. Uh, whooped yeah, the Rams they did that was, game too, which is very uh, surprising to me. But I didn't know how good the yeah. way this season. Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams. He was the number one in the draft. The Bears got him. Um, it's flip of coin whether a number one draft actually does good when they hit the NFL. Uh, but yeah. So so again. Since the Rams did get their ass kicked at the same time the Vikings uh, were kicking ass, like I said, great times to be a Vikings fan. <laughs> and it looks like Goff, he, he's, uh, he's got a pretty good home there with Detroit, bro, because they, they did yep. uh, that last game that they had with, I'm trying to remember who they played. But Seahawks. 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 I mean, they cleaned him up. They cleaned they him did. up. And I forgot that wide receiver's name. He's a fucking monster. He reminds yeah. me of like Deion Sanders. Like mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit. So the white dude with the long name? No, it was a brother. It's a brother. But oh, he okay. was like he was steamrolling over dudes. Like it was crazy. Oh, I'm I'm thinking they're tight end. I'm thinking yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the lines tight end is a white dude with like long like yeah some Y's and some Z's and some K's in there. Oh. <laughs> no. No, this guy was a. I think he was a wide receiver, but I mean, like, incredible, you know. But yeah, yeah, really talented cat. But nonetheless, this is a gaming podcast. You guys came here for the games, not the sports. But uh, welcome, of course. If you like the show, if you like watching us, hello. You should be sure to subscribe on our channel. Uh, at the Gamers for Life podcast, uh, at G4L podcast in particular, that is our name on YouTube. Uh, we put a lot of good work in there, man. Arthur puts a lot of really good work in there from streaming. We've been streaming some Warhammer shit. Um, he's got mad videos, and that's how we've been growing our subscriber base recently. So congrats, congrats to you, Arthur, all of your hard streaming work. And, um, you know, definitely just really doing more shit. You know, uh, if you guys prefer to listen to us, you can find us on the podcast application of your choice. Fucking pick one. We're there. Uh, and anything else regarding the gamers for life? <laughs> I wasn't aggressive at all. I, I didn't mean. I, 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 I didn't mean to sound so uh, so angry there. But uh, uh, should, just, I, should I listen to Spotify or YouTube in the background or Apple Music? Just fucking pick one. Big one. Big one. We're, we're, we're there, you know. Um, yeah, I just remember how hard it was to get everything launched. So <laughs> I was just like, "Just pick one." It shouldn't work by now. Um, you know else? how many times I had to verify our fucking email address? <laughs> <laughs> all the videos I've edited. All the podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Shot, all the audio late nights of exporting importing shit no man no man we do a good job here man i'm proud of us and as you can see unfortunately church isn't with us today uh just had a little bit of a scheduling constraint on my end i own that uh but i'm sure he'll be back with us in the future to deliver his uh we, just his side. we got we got shit to do places to be people yeah. to see yeah yeah and, and, and as did he which is why he isn't here but we're just trying to get it in trying to give you guys an episode because we yeah. missed last week uh, because we were busy and that's uh, yeah. me that's <laughs> all right it's all I right was too bu- i was too busy taking pictures with the, with the viking player my bad <laughs> <laughs> it's all right it's all right you're doing your thing you know it's all good no no one's gonna no one's gonna uh chastise you for that but anyway as far as anything else regarding the game is for life you can go to linktree.com forward slash uh game is for life the number four life and then again 
Subscribe on our YouTube. We worked too fucking hard. We got over 300 videos, I think. We're doing the damn thing. We're going to keep doing the damn thing uh, at G4L Podcast. G, the number four L Podcast. Here at the Gamers for Life, uh, we read the news so you can watch or listen to what you choose by clicking on the links of the time code within the description of the episode. So you can go to what you want or you can just hang out with us here at the Gamers for Life Podcast. And uh, today, to start off the shenanigans, I did want to talk about the state of play. Uh, they had a state of play about 11 days ago, because I know obviously we missed last week. So we're kind of playing catch up here today. And then, of course, Arthur, since he is a PS5 owner, I'm going to throw it to him to get his thoughts on, you know, how he feels about the state of play and, and everything. So uh, the floor is yours. This this was interesting because I can absolutely promise you, Drill, I was watching the state of play unlike any other state of play I've watched before because I had a dog in a fight. I am now a PS5 customer. Because yeah. before, when you're watching something from the outside looking in, you don't have nowhere near as a dog in a fight. You're not as passionate. You're not as happy. You're more just neutral, right? So your reactions or your thoughts are more like, eh. So up until now, we've had state of plays and Church is like, man, that really pissed me off because he's a PS5 owner. And I'm like, oh, it doesn't affect me. I don't give a shit, you know, because that's a very, you know, like normal American consumer thing is like this other shit's doing this. Well, that doesn't affect me. I don't care. Um, but <laughs> yes. this was this was the first state of play where not only Drell, not only am I watching this as a PS5 owner, I was also watching this as a customer that just recently canceled their Game Pass. So this is a whole new set of eyes, whole new set of eyes watching this. And thank you for joining the dark side again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, hey, like we said, man, I'll either pay for my for my eights, nines, and tens, then get my sevens for twenty bucks a month. Amen. Just saying. Just Amen. saying. Um, you know, you know, Space Marine gonna be Space Marine gonna be a contender for game of the year. i happy to keep playing it. But so a state of play, um I I think a lot of people online supposedly like hated the shit out of it. Like they just tanked it. I liked it. I liked what I saw. Um I don't rem I don't think there were any like day one um PlayStation Plus premium launches, but I know that. Like I knew that like, Game Pass Game Pass, you know, prides itself in having day one at Game Pass, day one in Game Pass. PlayStation Plus premium doesn't advertise for that. So I wasn't upset when I didn't when I didn't see that. And sometimes, sometimes, Drew, we actually get a surprise hit that, like, under the radar gets released day one on PlayStation Plus Premium, like the Hogwarts Quidditch game, and then like also the Plucky Squire, another great game, which were both day one launches on PlayStation Pro Premium. But back to the state of play, um, I don't dock Sony points for not having day one things. That's not what the subscription subscription's about. Um, I thought they did good. As a new first person, you know, now some people might have like Stockholm syndrome or, you know, it's like, you know, it's like watching a draft for the first time. You might be like, oh, I think this was a good decision. Whereas an old school veteran be like, no, man, they always fucking do this and they fucking lie. and blah. But like, so I don't have that much backing into it, but I liked it. I liked what I saw. Um, there is a couple of bias points in here. Number one drill, the biggest bias I have is one of my favorite games is being remade. I'm sure a lot of, I, I know a lot of people call this like the remake state of play, which is fair, but to be fair, that's like Nintendo's whole fucking platform. Sorry. Um, but with state of, with the state of play, like Drell, like how many times every now and again, do you and I bounce back and forth amazing successful IPs that the PS2 had? And what's one for the regular, you know, I have receipts. What's one I've been talking about forever is Soul Reaver Legacy of Kane. And it was yep. funny because you, you and I were talking about that game like just like days before this state of play. And so to see um, Soul Reaver Legacy of Kane getting remade, I was ecstatic while I was walking on the treadmill. I'm trying to be healthy. I was walking on the treadmill while watching, while watching the state of play. And I was like, ah! that's why that's why in a group chat, Jarrell, I don't know if you remember, John, in a group chat, I posted a blurry photo. because so I was like, yeah, it's blurry. I'm walking. Fucking deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> And I'm happy they're not doing like this bundled bullshit. Um, I know it's not one for one. I know it's not like you know found the you know, the 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 monolith you know the fucking colossal IP that is Final Fantasy VII. But but you know but so they're not. There are multiple gig legacy of King uh, Soul Reaver games. They are both. It's one package, one and two, which I'm really happy to see. 
Um, so I was really happy to see that. I don't know if there's a price point. There was a release date. I forget when it was. Um, I'm still not going to pre-order it. I'm still not going to buy it day one. I've been burned too many times by remakes. Like, Drill, you and I both remember GTA. G, remember the GTA trilogy remake? How bullshit that was? Vice City. Remember yeah, it was Vice City? That was one of the worst in a while. San Andreas and GTA 3. Those are horrible remakes, and we've seen that time and time again. So don't think my hype train for one of my favorite PS2 games is you know going to go off the rails. I'm going to pre-order it. I'm going to do all this shit. No, I'm still going to wait. I'm still going to wait for all the influencers and all the streamers and all the fucking kids to be the true beta testers. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. And of course, Drill, a game I'm playing now I haven't beat yet because I have other things going on, aka Purging the Heretics with you, with Bacon, with our friends in Space Marine 2. But ghost of tsushima has a sequel um uh ghost of yote so this is a new region it's a new character um and and we'll get into it later but it's causing other companies stocks to fucking plummet from its mere existence but ghost of tsushima let me again uh, ghost of tsushima is one of my favorite modern rpgs um i've i've been playing it on the place because i have playstation plus premium um like we were saying, Drill, um, which we, you know, Church and I kind of like egged you on, which we think is a right, a good decision to buy a PlayStation 5 controller because, like Church told me, like we've all experienced, first party PlayStation games utilize every feature of the PS5 controller. So when you play the flute, when you call your horse, when you like ask, there's no quote unquote radar in this game, but when the wind tells you where to go, it co that comes through your PS5 speaker. And the sheathing of the sword, the, that sheathing, shing, sound i will never get tired of um that comes to the ps5 controllers so to have that crescendo that crescendo of one of the best games ever made by one of the best reliable developers here under sony's first party platform to have another game coming out is um is was really good there were a lot of other games that i think are on brand for uh sony there's a lot of anime style games and that's and that that's you know we you know you, you remember drill um sony had a ton of the tales series um xenoblade um was a little more nintendo but there's a ton of anime games that are like coming to sony i think that's on brand for them but otherwise yeah they have a little bit more they showed um i honestly say that was the conference where they showed a little bit more monster hunter wilds aka waifu that is the engineer was happy to see that another thing too drill um a sort of like hot take slash me going not going back my word but saying that marketing fucked up i think that the trailer we saw for dragon age veilguard whatever the fuck it's called i think that's a trailer we should have seen weeks before launch like that that because like because the early released games all the all the early release content we've been getting for dragon age made the made it look like shit like i'm sorry that character creation drill i don't know if you've seen those fucking horn people you remember the horn people from dragon Age inquisition and dragon Age origins how they were fucking beefy and metal and gritty now they just have giant five heads it's like fucking embarrassing it really it really does look like i'm not even joking draw a lot of people are saying this it looks like they got like the sims character design people involved the dragon age it kind of shows because it's kind of cartoony it's kind of bubbly it's very like it's not as dark it's not as gritty there's no words like there's not blood there's not scars there's not wrinkles you know what i mean there's no like i don't want to say wear and tear on the skin but there's no aging like every it's like a, like it's almost like a sims cartoon character in dragon age which whether you like the design or not i think is subjectively bad but gameplay i think that 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 trailer we saw at the state of play is the best trailer we've seen for dragon age until now like that was a really good fucking trailer we get to fight a dragon you see how your npcs are involved with it you get to see the combat system because up until now when we see the, the the individual screenshots of dragon age's hud it looks chaotic ass fuck but when you see the motion old school bioware players like us we're like oh that's not chaotic that's bioware and that, like, you remember whether it was Star Wars Knights of Republic or Mass Effect draw, this is kind of like Mass Effect 2. And I would say this is most like Mass Effect 2 where it's action, action, action. But when you hold up the menu to use your power or to use your, uh, your, use your party member's power, time slows down. And that's what Mass Effect 2 was. So the second you get out of that menu, yeah, it looks clusterfucky as fuck. There's your ability wheel, there's their ability wheel, and there's the other ability wheel. So again, 
on in an image you're like oh there's like 15 things on screen but you're not using 15 things on screen you, you're just you're just freezing time so this one mage can free somebody or that you could do your bow shot so so as much as crap as i was giving dragon age i, I still think this is valid like for some of their other i'll just say creative design choices when it comes to certain types of scars you can have on your character um but I will say that I think that trailer we saw at State of Play was the best trailer we've seen for Dragon Age. And I think, I think, I honestly think, Drell, we should have seen that shit weeks in advance. I don't want to go on a tangent of Dragon Age, but remember, Drell, we didn't even know the name of this fucking game until a month before launch. And that wasn't good. That doesn't bode well at all. That makes me think the game's not fleshed out. That makes me think they don't, they don't know what they're doing. It makes me think of Anthem. Remember, Anthem developers didn't know what their game looked like until they saw a trailer that some other teammate were like, oh, hey, you guys across the hall, you guys made that trailer? Oh, that's what this game's supposed to look like? Well, that's not what we're fucking making. And so, and so, yeah. But otherwise, um, as a whole. Oh, another thing, Drell. Uh, that's another win. A, bi a big win, especially for uh, possible uh, fans of Google Images or subreddit, is Stellar Blade is getting a photo mode. So uh, that's it. <laughs> oh, daddy. Okay, okay. So there's me a lot of um. Uh, there's me a lot of images. Of her quote unquote climbing down a ladder. Um, uh, uh, I'm putting it in the group chat now just real quick for Joel, just so you can see it. But um, otherwise, like the animation that uh, the animation that the main character climbs down a ladder is like just straight up on par with a stripper pole. Just no, no way to say it. Just, just, she just, that just straight up the way how she climbs down a ladder. But otherwise, yeah, I think say a play was a pass for me. Um, for a grade, I think a C plus B minus only because this was like a bit ago. So I kind of forget all the things that were showed. But I think some notable takeaways for me was the best gameplay trailer for Dragon Age we've seen. I'm still not, not going to buy it day one. I'm still not pre-ordering it. Not only because not only because of how bad the game is or how like how bad I think it may be. It just play time. You know, Joe, we talked about this a lot. You, we got whole ass jobs. Like we have whole ass jobs. We have a whole ass life. So I can't buy everything for the sake of buying everything. Like I know a lot of people have FOMO, the fear of missing out. I don't. So I'm not going to buy a game day one just to say I have the game day one when I know I can't play it. Um, but I think some of the biggest takes away from me were Dragon Age, the gameplay. Um, um, if or when Stellar Blade comes out to PlayStation Plus Premium, that's definitely going to be my play. That's definitely a game I'm going to play where I'll definitely uh, <laughs> potentially get, you know, indulge myself in that photo mode. Uh, and then, of course, the Soul Reaver remakes, which is like one of my favorite um, IPs ever made. But again, just because I'm a fanboy for this IP doesn't mean I'm going to be dumb and jump in head first to this pool that I don't know how deep it is. We've seen remakes fail. We've seen remakes get, you know, messed up. You know, look at, you know, we, I mentioned it earlier, Nats Republic, where the fuck, you know, that game, that, that game has been in public, you know, uh, publisher hell. And of course, the last takeaway is, of course, Ghost of, not Ghost of, Yota, not Ghost of Shijima 2, sorry, Ghost of Yotai. I think, I think ending the conference on that was a big mic drop moment so that even if people didn't like the conference up until then we can all agree that game looks amazing and not to go too much into tangent but i feel like some of the arguments or people have had of like some of the arguments are that people have had of like oh female in gaming blah 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 no one gave a shit about that like this game's gonna have a female character and no one gives a shit it just it looks like a good game it's from a trusted publisher and i'm sure it's gonna be absolutely well and drill just some things for you that they announced after the conference is they are expanding um onto the online ghost mode so that online pve cooperative cooperative mode they're adding more things onto that so that's all good news for this game you read a pod today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, bro. Yeah, good good points there indeed. Um so I'm I'm gonna start from Yote, um, Dragon Age. And I'm gonna kinda work backwards here. Yeah. I have a little bit of a different opinion on Yote. So I think the game looks good. Um but my biggest problem, and I don't have many problems with this because this is more Ghost of Shima content, which I'm very excited for. To me, it looks more like a DLC than a whole new game. Like for a PS5 Pro, they're announcing that, right? And then they're, and then you know, they want to have these enhancements and stuff. And just looking at the game, like it to me, it it would make sense if it if it was just like if they just put like like DLC for Shishima and then it's just, oh, you know, it goes to Yote, Yote, new game. 
like it to me i didn't see a generational push or a graphical push as far as like yeah ps5 i think that's the only thing i i i, I hope this is like alpha footage or just very early footage, so by the time the game comes out, it just looks a lot sharper and a lot more like, whoa. The game looks good. Like, it's not like the character animations are terrible or anything like that. Like, the game looks good. The music sounds incredible. They're still being very true to the the sensibility of the Ghost series, which I, which I think is fire. Um, you know, I it, and obviously, I don't give a shit if, if you're playing a female character or not, and obviously, I think most people watching it didn't have an issue with either obviously you have a small piece in the pie chart or they're just this fucking like i don't even know why those people play games but i think the major the biggest issue the, the one of the biggest criticisms that i kind of agree with is that like it looks good but i think it could look better because ghost of Tsushima deserves that or the ghost series deserves that so i'm hoping we're just seeing early footage in that the game will look even crazier especially with the ps5 pro enhancements that i'm sure they're going to try to incorporate into this game as well might come later just because of the reasoning of it um but yeah, nonetheless, I'm excited. I just wanted it to look a little better. Uh, as far as for Dragon Age uh, Veil Guard, you are right. It's looking better than it did. Originally, I was like, this is a throwaway game. I can't wait to see the news of it taking a shit. <laughs> of people just like, I didn't even know this game was going to come out. And now that it's out, it's pure ass. Okay, whatever. You know, so the the trailer of what we saw during the state of play, I was like, hey, this game looks better. You know, like, the, the, the fighting looks pretty good. You know, I still think it's it's very odd that in the midst of fighting a dragon, everyone's hair looks amazing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like Sims. It's like someone took this. It's like someone took the EA Sims game engine and put a fighting game in it. It's yeah. not bad. Yeah. It's just like the, the OG Covenant art for like Dragon Age Origins was like, it looked like you were shotgunning like a Dragon Age blood. Like, blah. So we've gone from Dragon Blood to like... To, to you know to like everyone everyone like if you take any single frame from this trailer or put like that fucking sims crystal above it they'll be like oh yeah this is a sims dlc <laughs> yeah man i was just like what the fuck is like why is, why does everyone's hair look beautiful i was like we gotta close the gates I was like, uh, you know like is this a maybelline commercial like what the fuck is going on <laughs> Right, why is you're going there? I was sipping a beer and I, I, I unmuted myself to be like, hold the line. Why? Because maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I was you just like, me too, bro. <laughs> I was like, why does it look like this? You know, so uh, it is a little hopeful that the game looks a little bit better. I know kind of funny was kind of blowing it up as they usually blow up a lot of the shit that they probably get payments for. Uh, as far as like, oh, the game looks pretty good. <laughs> you know, I'm very, I am very, very skeptical and it I'm not possible. buying it. Let's, let's yeah. be realistic. This game went like, this game went from dead on arrival to like, Okay, maybe we have a game. Because again, because yeah. again, we have because there was supposed to be like remember Joel, there was supposed to be like a way earlier conference. Maybe it was PAX, Gamescom, don't quote me, but you remember there was supposed to be a conference where we were supposed to get Dragon Age uh footage like way early. And they shit like, nah, we gotta cancel it. And then instead of getting footage, all we got was the big announcement, the name of the game. Which by the way, I still say the last game, it was like wolf something was like way better than veil like i'm a guard of the veil Man, fuck the veil i want to guard wolf dude. oh <laughs> yeah the new yeah the new the, the, the change in the name i'm like kind of went like, from bad to worse i don't know <laughs> it went from like wolf's reign or something about a wolf to like like, so like wolf's wolf's bane or something like that to like veil guard i'm like yeah. Oh, quick, oh, guys, we got to defend this veil. Why? Because it's purple and pretty tapestry. <laughs> veil the chandelier, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are we naming it these things? Yeah, I was okay, whatever. They decided to change the name. That's fine. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what else they have. Again, I'm on, I'm on board with you, too. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not, not like, ready to fucking pre-order it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm nowhere near that. You know what I mean? So... We'll see what happens. I think they should release a demo if they're really going to stand on their nuts on this. Release a fucking demo. Have us play it. Let's see. Let's like I'll be the judge whether or not this will be a good fucking game or not. You know. So um, yeah, very curious on that. Uh, one thing I did notice is that they're still providing some PS4 support. 
which I find very interesting. There's quite a few games, you know, even like the Soul Reaver shit. Um, Lunar, the Lunar game, uh, that's going to be out for PS4, yeah. uh, which I think is cool. Um, that would have been a great game to release on a handheld, like if, it, if the portable was actually like a real handheld instead of some remote play bullshit. I mean, that would be a perfect game to play on there. Um but uh, I thought that was interesting. I said, okay. I said, I wouldn't, you know, I don't really care to play it on a fucking PS5, but the, the game looks cool. Um, there was one indie game called like Wills, like Wishlist, I think. Um, I think it was a VR game. I want to talk more about VR as well, too. Uh, but that game looked pretty cool. Like the art style was really neat. The music was great. I really fucked with the music heavy. It was very, very immersive. Um, it was one of the first like VR ish type games instead of PS5. And I think it's VR only. I thought at first it like PS5 and VR, but I think they said no, it's available for PS5 on VR too. But it's oh, called Hell, like, Hell is Us? No, 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 not that one. I think it's called Wishlist. It, it, re it, the, that trailer came out before The Hell is Us. That, that, the, or the, the, the Hell game looks pretty interesting. It kind of reminds me of like a, I don't know, like a mix between like, Silent Hill, Alan Wake, and something else. Yeah, um, I, I I know what you're talking about. I think you maybe mixed up the name, but like, oh yeah, what is it called? Uh, I think it's the lake. The so I'm just gonna roll off some real quick games. You tell me how to hit it. Towers of Ag Agapsa, Sonic X, uh, Team and T Shredder's Revenge DLC. No, it, came Walk, way, it came out way earlier. It was like one of the Blade, first three. Pow World, Monster in the Wilds, no. uh, Metro Awakening VR, that looked good by the way, the Lunar Game, uh, Soul Reaver Game, Hitman, World of Assassins, Hell is Us, uh, a Fortnite controller, uh, Fear of the Spotlight, uh, Fantation, Neo, Dimension, Dynasty Warriors, Dragon Age, Arc Age Chronicles, Alan Wake to the Lake House, uh, PlayStation Plus games included, included the Dead Space remake. Um, the new PS5 Chroma skins, the PS5 Pro information, the Lego Horizon Adventures, uh, the Horizon Remastered, and then Ghost, Yo Ghost of Yote, and then Astrobot. So, like I said, I think one of those titles I, I rattled off may be the one you're talking about. But, but, but go on. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, damn, it pisses me off. Uh, I'm trying to see... Uh, yeah, because I think I'm staring at it right now. Uh, why? Yeah, the the yeah on PS5. Okay, I'm looking at the trailer right now, but I'm waiting for the fucking. So I guess in the game you're you're playing like this little character with like a, a candle on top of his head, and it's like this eerie world. It kind of reminds me of um, Nightmare Before Christmas, actually. <laughs> as far as for the art style. Oh, okay, the Midnight Walk. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that's the name of it, The Midnight Walk. That's the game. That music is crazy. I was like, yo, they're really going for it on the production end. So yeah, The Midnight Walk, I'm very interested in that game. That seems like a fire game that I think would be dope. I want to say it's a VR game only. I'm not sure. Um, or it's PS5 and VR. I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, Coming to PS5 and PSVR 2 in spring 2025. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that game is going to be fire. I would buy that. I, I would consider buying good. that. Yeah, I'll consider, I'll consider buying that. The music looks great. The art styles is fire. Um, yeah, it seems like they're continuously supporting uh, the PlayStation 4, uh, which is interesting, which is, you know, I guess it's inevitable at this point. Um, <laughs> it's something like that's fine, I guess. Um, yeah, I thought it was, I, I would probably give it like a, a B minus, I think, for the overall state of play. Um I, I like these kind of state of plays better than like we're gonna focus on one game and one game only. I'm like, guys, like you're just you just released a fucking P you just announced a PS5 Pro, you want people to pay seven hundred dollars. You better release some fucking like a game cat, like a you know, collage of games, you know, as far as like, hey, this is what we're working on, this is what we're working on, this is what we're working on, you know, and even after all of this there's it still looks a little bleak. I still wanna see more games, you know, so We'll see. Um, I, I know definitely the Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater Delta is going to. Uh, that, that's. I'm going to buy that. I'm just saying now. <laughs> I first was like, man, fuck Konami. They're not doing it justice. Until like watching like what da the David Hayter uh, interview with uh, with my man uh, who worked with Kojima, and uh, the game looks great. It seems like they're really doing it justice. So that will. That will keep me preoccupied, but I'm probably going to buy it for PC for real. Um, 
But yeah, so we'll see. You'll see what happens here. Um, uh, I'll say real ahead. quick. Since I did real quick, just quickly scroll through everything. Uh, a few other lasting thoughts I have. I can see why some people are upset because we're getting a remake no one asked for, uh, which is the first Horizon game. I'm not saying it's bad, but like, I you know, there's so many Sony customers that are asking for a remake of Bloodborne for the love of God. And then, not only not only we getting it's it's weird because not only we getting a Horizon Zero Dawn, the first game remake, which doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Or like, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm just saying it doesn't. I'm not saying like worthy of a remake, but like no one asked for it, especially since the last since the sequel is on PlayStation Plus Premium. You can just play anytime. But not only we get that remake, we also got that Lego Horizons game, the Lego Horizons. Um, uh, trip the game too. So I thought that was a, I thought that was a game that a lot of people missed. One thing I will add to drill, I thought there were cool. I thought there were cool like a few E three aspects to this game, to this to this um to this state of play, because we got two updates that no one knew was coming, and they're both like one was free, and one was oh by the way you can play this now. So the one announcement we got. Of like, by the way, live now is that Shredder's Revenge DLC. I know it's like more of a niche genre, but like that Shredder's Revenge beat him up. It's technically a sequel to the old school, old school TMNT arcade game. So that game's been pretty fun. So I thought it, I just, you know, whether it was like, it wasn't the biggest mic drop, but it, I thought it was cool that we did get a whole, by the way, that you can play this right now. Like we haven't got that from a while, especially from Sony since they've announced it from E3. And then plus, remember too, Drill. Astrobot. We got a free a free update for the new Astrobot game. There's gonna be new characters, new levels, new speedruns, new new levels, new uh, new um bots to rescue. So again, I thought that was pretty cool. Um it wasn't that wasn't a, that wasn't an update that was like live now, but it's like by the end of this month. Like it's coming out ASAP of like you can get this free update. So yeah, I thought though I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool. That it, it scratched some old school E3, some old school E3 vibes, like we said, of like, oh, by the way, surprise free update via the Astrobot. And then again, surprise new DLC available now for this TMNT game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's a good point, Arthur. I think, um, See, here's the here's the here's the the problem with um, some of these games that PlayStation tends to make a, an HD remake for. They they turn into placeholders. You know, they turn into placeholders, and yes, no one asked for it, but we need something to fill the cards, and this is one of our IPs, and this is what we're going to do. So it's like it's, it's like the Last of Us situation, right, where they just kept releasing, hey, we're going to release a re an HD remaster for this, and the HD remaster for this, and people are like, yo, like, it hasn't been that long since the last one, bro. Like, are you serious? But people still buy it. The he's the super fans still buy it, and it just becomes a placeholder. And I think that was one of, you know, Church's valid arguments with PlayStation as far as like, yo, where are the other games? Like, yeah, that's great, you're doing a remaster, but where are the other games? You know, so I just need them to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> or just you know give me something that is going to be revealed soon uh in that particular regard also to power World, this is the first time it's available on on playstation 5 so that was a you know that for for people that were excited about that that's cool <clears throat> I, no dude drill not only is that cool um they got balls because remember power world's in the middle of major litigation with nintendo um and just real quick i know there's a lot of there's a few things that happen in world war War in a bye week a quick synopsis is Nintendo is suing Power World for copyright infringement. Couple things. The copyright infringement is not for the design of their characters. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with their quote unquote pow ball, Pokeball mechanic that's uh, supposedly very similar to Pokemon. That they throw the ball, you have a higher chance, you have to aim the ball, throw the ball have a higher chance of capturing the monster when it's lower health and that it ticks three times before you actually capture it. But here's the thing, Drell. And this is that I thought this was crazy. That patent that just laid out, which actually describes Pokeballs, that patent wasn't filed until after Power World came out. 
So, oh, wow. Interesting. So I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. Um, I will say of the one thing that's like kind of like they may have minimal ground to stand on, maybe that Pokeball mechanic, but that's kind of bad. I won't go down to this rabbit hole too much because because there's a whole other story on it. But like people are saying if we start, you know, going back to the shitty age, Nintendo Nintendo's the worst. Nintendo's the worst. EA is right there with them of uh, claiming copyright or inf- infringement on specific gameplay mechanics, even though you were not the first ones to do it. Or in this case, you you claim a copyright infringement after your competitor released their game. Doesn't look good. Um, there's just a big kind of synopsis that copyright infringement on gaming mechanics shuts down creativity and is like, it kills any game sometimes. We still say, drill, remember drill. The reason we don't have uh, a dialogue wheel in games, you have dialogue options, you have dialogue squares, you have dialogue lists, you have dialogue octagons but you do not have a dialogue a dialogue wheel because ea filed a patent on that even though ea was nowhere near the first person to do a dialogue wheel but but all that aside i will say in terms of sony sitting on their nuts i thought it was fucking cool i thought it was cool of them to show power world after this litigation announcement be like yeah oh nintendo you're suing somebody what, what else is fucking new water is wet here's power world coming to ps5 deal with it. <laughs> yeah like why y'all do this why y'all figure this shit out i'm gonna release it on my platform thanks no yeah i, I feel i feel that so let's continue on here um i know you uh, brought up the information for this article which is fire thank you for that specifically talking about uh how tencent is in talks uh, potentially purchasing Ubisoft, um, uh, and uh, you provided some 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 stuff here. So I kind of want you to spearhead this one. Um, give me your thoughts. Very crazy, so, interesting conversation there. Lot going on. So first off, this is the this is like quote unquote a rumor, but there's a lot of valid sources, including like Forbes and other like financial shit talking about this that makes me think there's there's some validity there like i always say drill you know when a game is bad when like the fucking finance channel starts talking about it i remember drill going to long beach back when i lived in long beach california i remember going if you remember i when i lived off of that one uh that corner apartment i remember going to that burger place around the corner and i remember this was after the launch of star wars battlefront 2 after they announced that, oh, you can either buy our characters or play 40 hours to unlock one of, like, the 60 heroes. And then they announced that, you know, which I think at the time still holds a record for the most downvoted Reddit comment where it says, oh, you could just earn the reward and earn the, the sense of account, you know, sense of, like, reward to earn it, whatever, that it tanked, that, that like, that game that's so bad Disney stock was affected. So I still remember going to get my fucking (coughs) double cheeseburger and fries and a large Coke at my burger place. And I'm like, why is the stock market channel on? Why is Star Wars Battlefront on the stock market channel? Oh shit, they're fucking with Disney's money. Disney's going to be pissed. (laughs) And And so again, that's how you know a game is doing bad when like fucking, you know, like Bloomberg and shit's talking about it. So Ubisoft. Over the last few years, to bring it to speed with context, the last few years, Ubisoft has released okay games, at best, failures on average. So the last biggest game was released was Star Wars Outlaws, a game that was not released to critical acclaim, a game that was given sevens at the most, a game that was expected to do well, and then the more we saw this game, the, the more game, disappointed we got. Sorry, the game that thinks that church thinks it's gonna be a cult classic. No, Star Wars Outlaws is already practically <laughs> fucking dead, dude. I'm like, sorry, I have to laugh at that. The game is not gonna be known as a cult classic. No. I'm this sorry. Is, continue, continue. Outlaws is gonna be a game of the many of what not to do for a Star Wars game. Um. We'll get back with more to Star Wars, but Ubisoft as a whole. So they announced, so timeline was way back a couple years ago, it was announced that EA was losing its monopoly 
its sole ability to release Star Wars based games and that the Star Wars IP wasn't necessarily becoming public, but the Star Wars IP was no longer going to be solely under EA because every Star Wars of the, or every Star Wars game at that point has only been made by EA. So following an announcement where the Star Wars IP was able to be used for other entities, Ubis- it was announced that Ubisoft was going to make an open world Star Wars game. And a lot of people, a lot of people like me were excited because Ubisoft's bread and butter are open world games. So recently, Star Wars comes out. It's not a good game. Seven at best. It's horrible NPCs. There's no choices. I hate, you know, the side tangent this, but Star Wars players like me are tired, tired, tired of being fooled and lied to that there's choices in the game, but you don't really, you don't really get to make a choice. Like, oh, this is an outlaw. This game's called Outlaws, but you can't really be a criminal, Drill. You're an outlaw, but you can't kill people, Drill. You're an outlaw, but you can't kill NPCs. You can't kill the animals. You can't do this. You can't do that. Then you're not a fucking outlaw. Just call it Just call it what every other Star Wars game has fucking been this entire fucking time. The anti-hero. Oh, you start bad, and you want to join the dark side. But you discover the dark side are fascists and you want to join the good guys because the rebels. Yay. That's been every fucking Star Wars campaign, the last fucking game. So so Ubisoft was banking this game to do well. It's not doing well. So and then before that, we had this Pandora game um, from the Avatar series, from the Avatar James Cameron movies that no one, no one, no one, no one, no one fucking wanted no one was like oh my god james cameron's making a sequel 10 years later i can't wait to play the game said fucking no one so they released the game no one asked for it had had minimal okay sales i don't know if that game was considered a flop sales wise it probably was and then again score wise is only considered a seven because again it's a game no one asked for it cost money no one gave a shit so really people didn't buy it and those that did said it's an okay game and then before that we had a game that should have been dead. They should have canned it. They should have canceled it. Skull and Bones. A game where we were reminded that Ubisoft's biggest enemy right now is past Ubisoft. Because Ubisoft has released some of the best arguable, quote-unquote, pirate ship mechanics in modern gaming via Assassin's Creed Black Flag, uh, Assassin's Creed Floor, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which came out, what, eight, ten years ago, if not more? Like, how long? Like, that's been fucking what feels like a decade since Assassin's Creed 4 long, came out. A long time ago. And then we have the CEO trying to piss on a leg, telling us it's rain, saying, oh, this will be the first quadruple-A game, which is a play in words because there's indie games, and there's quote-unquote triple-A games, which are like the big, big, big studios like Square Enix, like Ubisoft, like EA. Um, so this, so the CEO saying, Hey, that's not piss in your leg. That's rain. That's not rain. That's a quadruple A experience and it fucking tanks as it should. Um, and then, uh, and then, sorry, I just got a text. So the past three games that Ubisoft has released are not doing well. And then the new game that's on horizon, Assassin's Creed Shadows, a game steeped in controversy since day one. Because back to things I've called Drell, we should, you know, I feel like we should have a list, but it'll be too fucking long of things we've called it. I called it. I called this that the next major Assassin's Creed game will be in Field Japan. Why? Because they've, they're running out of places in the map and time zones to put it in. So just, you know, they're, you know, like just how many, how many other areas of history. And areas on a map can they go? And I'm like, well, have they been a samurai yet? The next one's going to be a samurai. So this next game called Assassin's Creed Shadows was announced to be a samurai. It's going to be feudal Japan during the samurai era. We're like, sweet. Yes, 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 yes. And then Ubisoft uh, decided to do the split uh, main character thing that they've been doing for a while. They, I think they've been doing it since Creed's Origins, where one character is a guy, one character is a girl. You get two characters to play from. Uh, one of which is the black historical character, Yusuke, and this other one is this, non, is this fictional character. I don't even know her fucking name. When Ubisoft doubles down that, hey, if you, hey, we're making a samurai game. If you're upset, he's black. Get over it. Fuck you. You know, you know fuck yourself. Which, telling the internet to go fuck itself, that's is, really well. is, But is respectable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, but I think that I think the the other like, obviously they had man other issues with the game yeah. that is respectable. But to me, is I feel like they didn't really how they handled it was yeah. not well because because on one hand they were saying on one hand they were saying we're going to be very very historically like very very historically accurate, and then I'll know where it's like hey cool it's Yusuke's fight scene in the gameplay trailer, 
bam, we got rap music. It's like, ah, uh, really? Yeah, that, yeah, Come on. That is, I mean, and also too, like, I can slightly argue that thinking about it because, like, remember, like Afro Samurai, like, they, there was some, there was some, like hip hop ish music with that there, there was but that was their lane like that was like the intro like the the like the, the alpha of samurai yeah. that was their lane they got samuel jackson that samuel jackson as a voiceover the fight music was consistently that they never once advertised historically accurate and then plus because it was a show you with every show you have an intro song to kind of introduce the show so that was the vibe day one we knew we knew what the vibes were day one so do you know like, what? Do you know what song they were they they played for that for the uh, the Yusuke uh, the trailer what no. rap song? Because if it was, was it like Hail Mary it? by Tupac, I'm like okay, like I can't argue that. <laughs> it wasn't if MF- it was if it was Wu Tang, like we can connect that because we're it like, wasn't MF Doom, was it? I don't know. No, I don't know. Well, but it, but again, it's almost like. As a kid, say the vibes. It's like up until now, all their vibes were historically accurate, historically accurate, historically accurate, and it was like rap music. And it's like, nah. and yeah. so, 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 so. But again, Yusuke is a is a real you know is a real character. Now, yeah. how far, how much he was a samurai, or whatever. That's he served under Nobunaga. He served under Nobunaga. Yeah. But yeah, as far as like and the it, the samurai rules were very loose. Then it wasn't like yeah, fucking like the, the military, you know. And then it, it didn't help. And then Drell, it also didn't it also didn't help. Ubisoft, that, that while this is happening, while this divisive, whatever you want to call it, it was divisive trailer. While this divisive Ubisoft trailer was was released, that the historical person they got as reference to who is like the main researcher on Yusuke is like getting investigated from like whatever Japanese university for potentially having his credentials revoked by like lying or significantly exaggerating because there apparently there are scrolls that exist to this day you can fucking read that like he did this this and this and it's like let's say take a point this one battle he was like a supply guy delivering supplies and this researcher was like nah he was fucking Leonidas up in that shit and so it just doesn't but again that's not Ubisoft's fault that's not Ubisoft's fault but it just doesn't it just doesn't hurt it doesn't, doesn't help them that while they're doubling down on historical accuracy, their source is potentially getting their their credentials revoked from the university he's employed at. And it's like, oof. So while all this is happening, Ubisoft's stock has been has been on the decline for the past five years. Um, case in point, hit a low. Hit a, we were talking about state of play. Ubisoft's stock hit a massive low point after Ghost of Yotai was announced. Because again, now you have a game, Ghost of Tsushima, that was a very, very successful samurai game. And now you have this other game riddled with, you know, controversy or divisiveness. Developers, of course, going online saying, if you don't like your game, don't buy it, which is mentality that's shooting, that's shooting every game in the foot that comes across. So now here we are, where Ubisoft's stock is at an all-time low, 10 cents. The rumors are now that Ubisoft is bleeding. Ubisoft is at an all-time low. There's rumors that Tencent might buy Ubisoft. And the thing is, Drill, now that we, you know, we have the full context, I know that was a lot, just, you know, you can't really reach up half a decade in 30 seconds. I'm not, I'm not known for being concise. But Ubisoft might be bought up by Tencent. And here's where I'm at, here's where I'm at with this, Drill. I have mixed opinions on this. I am not a fan of Tencent. But with with the corner that Ubisoft has pushed themselves into, this might be a good thing for them. Because say what you want about Ubisoft on the scenes, which I will always criticize, and they'll always, you know, they fuck with microtransactions. They fuck with a lot of things that make this industry not great. But with Ubisoft running their mouth and putting their foot in their mouth and shooting, them, shooting, their, you know, shooting their own games in the foot, Tencent might potentially get players back. The reason I say that is because, like, even though Tencent, which owns Riot Games, is a shitty studio, League of Legends is still is still one of the most successful like games today. Um, a lot of games under Tencent's belt do minimally well. Um, sometimes they don't. Like I say, Tencent fucked up a lot of what Square Enix was. Um, but but it's like but it's like you know like Tense. I guess what it comes down to, Drill, is if Tencent buys Ubisoft, would it get worse? And I think what's hurting Ubisoft in the public eye, in the public eye, which is their own fucking mouth, I think Tencent would just potentially tell them 
to shut the hell up, get off Twitter, and make a fucking game, which I think is what Ubisoft needs right now. Because every time Twitter is in the public eye, every time Ubisoft is in the public eye, they're shooting themselves in the foot. And even though I don't like Tencent, I think in the next, let's say, three years, because a decision on it, a decision like this, we won't see a, a pop, we won't see an effect like from this like the next morning, like. Like this game, Assassin's Creed: Shadows, is pro it's like for the most part fucking done. This game's coming out. Like it got delayed because of Yotai, but again, arguably this game's like "quote unquote" going gold anytime now. So Tencent, if they buy them, won't have an overhaul of this game. But with the corner Ubisoft has dug the hole into, I think Tencent, if they buy them, Ubisoft may see benefit from it. Whether I agree with it or like it or not, I think. It may go up. In case in point, we're talking about stock. Their stock, their stock has jumped up in a positive route since the rumors even this was announced. So again, I think it may be a benefit for Ubisoft, though absolutely cue me bitching about Tencent and their future microtransaction bullshit in the next, you know, like say next financial quarter or something like that, if this goes through. But you know, beggars can't be choosers. And right now Ubisoft is like a fucking beggar amongst the AAA companies. Yeah. Um so I don't, I think financially, um, for starters, this might be a good idea for them as far as to kind of get above water. Cause I think, uh, we saw this has had too many L's, you know, like you just described, uh, where it does need some, it does need some support financially from a company like Tencent. I, uh, I still feel the same about Tencent. I think the reason why its stock went back up is because Tencent has its hands in so many other uh, sections within the video game industry, not to mention things outside of the video game industry. Like they have a connection to DistroKid, which is like a huge streaming distribution platform that a lot of artists used. So, um, so I mean, I think when it comes to uh, my opinion on the Ubisoft matter, well, let me go back to the Assassin's Creed thing, right? Because I do think that it's interesting as far as for the shit. What was it called? Sa Shadow of Assassins or some shit? Uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Shadows. Shadows, okay. So, I to me, like, I don't really think... Um, they can still communicate a message without being idiots, you know? I think it's they're really their PR team is trash. Because I think when you have when you have something, even though it shouldn't be controversial, because you know people are fucking stupid and ignorant, that uh, to, to to have you know a black samurai, you're gonna have uneducated people who say, well, they're just doing this is just to just to please the, you know the black people or whatever. This is not accurate, blah blah blah. Like you can confidently speak to that. You can confidently speak to that to one, you know, maybe not demean people, but you can be like, this is this is accurate. There is, you know, there is archives and notes of, you know, him serving under Nobunaka and being a samurai at that time. Like there is some, it wasn't like fully completely structured on A, X, Y, and Z. You can still make your point without pissing anybody off. Um, you just have to have a really good fucking PR team. And I think this Ubisoft is really mm -hmm. just a mess when it comes to that. Oh, Speaking yeah. to the rap stuff, I know we talked about that before. I do think overall it's like, Jesus Christ. But I think if there was something contextually to be put in, like if they played Wu-Tang music over it, like that would make more sense because the whole origin of Wu-Tang, uh, Wu-Tang Clan, is it was inspired by old school martial yep. arts films, right? So there's a literal detachment connection connection to that samurai -ish area martial arts area like that's where wu-tang clan came from and, and to quickly as, uh, and to quickly add to and to quickly add to the wu-tang uh, sentiment drill yeah. we all remember the episode they're legal they're legal they're legally via the racial draft or asian now so hey we've seen that shit <laughs> <laughs> sorry you talk you can't talk about wu-tang that's in a, in a, in a japanese draft. context i mean not talk about the racial draft in the Chappelle show that's please hilarious. carry on that's hilarious um but yeah like uh uh, and then also, you know, like a lot of Bruce Lee's, uh, like some of the first of Bruce Lee's students were African American or were were black. You know what I mean? So like, and he even like well, he hung around those folks a lot. Obviously, it's not shown a whole lot on the internet because of the internet. Um, but like, there's a connection there in a general. But if it's like if they're playing like you know like rick ross music over it then yeah like i can see that being a pandering notion you know so i just don't uh, to me 
to to wrap around my point around that is that they don't have to me one i i don't think they're doing this for the right reason like the honest yep. reason you know like i i have a, like as a black person i have a respect that they're doing it but i think when they're trying to defend it you can see okay they're not doing this for like yeah. The right, like they're not, they're not, they're not. Like, on, they don't honestly want to promote Yusuke as a real person, a character, and all this stuff. It's just to put, you know, it's just to, to get more Twitter sales. Fans. They want to show their Twitter friends of like, look how cool we are. It's not one. Yeah. Like, it's not one to one. Yeah. It's not one to one. I know we got wrap up soon, but it's not one to one. Yeah. But like one of the main characters of Warhammer 40k Space Marine Two is black. Karen, yeah. you know, Karen, Kyron, he's, Kyron, yeah, yeah, Kyron. Yeah. he's the fucking he's the fucking homie. There's a part yeah. in the game where you think shit's about to go down. You're like, no, but like again, <laughs> but we've never once seen like some random fucking tweet or post or PR yeah. run about how one how one of the fucking main characters in this game's Asian, how the other main character is black. It just it is what it is. Whereas it's, again, like you're right, it's 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 yeah. it's like because they put the color of UCK skin or like his presence of the game on a pedestal, that became the focus instead of like the quality of the game but please continue. yeah but i think i think to but in in but i think uh i i think when it comes to if you are going to do that it is going to be on a pedestal because we've never seen it before like like as far as like to, to like in, in retrospect right so but if you're not going to stand on your nuts and like yeah this is what we're doing you know what i mean it's it's almost like, it's like it's like all the white women doing like a black lives matter like protest <laughs> like that's like that's how i feel it's like, do you guys, it's, like, it's like do you guys really know what you're doing um <laughs> but i will skid away from that but uh i i don't know I, i'm kind of like i don't know if this whole so, tent yeah. thing is gonna be the best decision overall long term i think short term yes because they yes. gotta get their shares up they gotta get the just like the value of the company up because they've made so many fucking decisions and spent so much money and they're not getting you know, they're not hitting they're not even copying they're not even breaking even you know um uh, outlaws they said did not do well no shit you know <laughs> all this stuff did not do well so they they need to make a decision because yeah all the things that they've done so far like it's it's been it's been shit so i, I know you i know one of the uh we're wrapping up soon here but you uh wanted to talk about uh the update for suicide squad <laughs> yeah oh yeah i just wanted to shun that but uh we're, and the other thing too real quick joe one yeah. other because uh run, when it comes to ubisoft thing so this 10 cent thing is like a quote unquote rumor but it's again nearly verified with all the reliable sources like bloomberg like forbes. right thank you because because like you know like forbes is synonymous with like the fcc so forbes is talking about it yeah there's probably some validity there but yeah. another option that's on the table too as another short-term immediate react reactive thing which the financial world is um the shareholders are asking or, or the shareholders have asked for internal investigation with the possible end goal to fire their current ceo which i actually again which i think would be a good idea because like you said drill their pr team and their, their top-down attitude is not helping them so like i think we're both in agreement like the short-term benefit of the short-term of tencent buying them would be a good thing Long term, we have to see. But if Tencent does buy them, there's just a fact that we can agree with. If you think Ubisoft has microtransaction to now, uh, hold your breath. <laughs> if Tencent ends up buying them, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, lastly, the, the in terms of gaming news, I want to go over is is news poke fun at a you know dead horse. Suicide Squad Kill Just League has a new season out and a new playable character, and no one gives a shit. Uh, <laughs> Church, you still owe me, bro. Send me my Amazon gift card, bro. Like, I got stuff I want to buy, bro. <laughs> like, like when it comes to when it comes to John, I, John, I predicting like quote unquote bad, not even bad life service games, bad games. We're we're kind of batting a thousand. Um, and so, and so right now, so right now, um, I think it was like later, early this week. Um, I forget the exact date. Um, they had an uh, they released season three. A, a Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, which has our newest playable character. Um, what's Deadshot's last name? Oh, Something fuck. Cassidy. I have no fucking okay. idea. Well, either a sure version. This new this new playable character. The new playable character is um, Cassidy Lawless. She is Deadshot's daughter. Um, even before the trailer for her was announced, all we had was a character bio, and we saw we already saw right at, right in the water because their her character description trail. It read, it read, I'm not even joking, Joel, it read like a Tumblr post. It read like a cringy, like, Gotham's most, most 
ethical thief who likes to stream her content to her th- to her who her millions of fans online um is coming out soon and we're like great so we have an ethical thief which once again draw i'm calling it i hate this new trend where a bad guy can't be a bad guy anymore it has to have like has to be like well they're still like probably rich they're going for the power because fuck capitalism and it's yeah. like so even then like her character bio was like cringy and then like also she's a streamer because yeah we all love seeing those in real life <laughs> yeah like god you want to they have Joel? to be they have to be a streamer right that's how we can get that money yeah yeah like how do we relate to the kids uh she's a streamer and it's like yeah because we all know one thing we love fuck about eating food is showing a camera in your face being like what up it's your boy fucking fart face and it's like get the fuck away from me um <laughs> so again her and and when i say nobody cares the the numbers are bad the, the numbers are behind me on that the player count peaked to less than 300 people uh for that season three update and remind you concord peaked at like 692 so the fact you now have this season three update well, supposedly the future of rock city supposedly supposed to be a 10-year game supposedly supposed to have 12 seasons and you're telling me on season three you're getting you're getting less than half the people that played concord we're we're not far drill from having this game fucking pulled um you know we called this from day one again it peaked like eight hundred people on steam and so i don't know man suicide squad circling the drain Again, they how they didn't see this from the start, we don't know. Um, you, you and I call this, um, you know, you, you and I call this a thousand yards away. Rock City's bread and butter has some of the best RPGs, best single player campaigns in the history of gaming, modern or retro. Um, and then WB executives are just failing left and right. Um, by the way, Drill, another WB executive fail. Uh, Joker 2. Uh, no shit <laughs> is apparently flopping at the box office right now. Um, yep. Joker one made like a billion dollars because it was a great movie. And then WB executives actually no WB executives slash the director of this movie said, what if we make it a musical? Cause that's what people love in their DC movies, a fucking musical. So Jesus. WB executives, dude, WB, WB, WB is hemorrhaging money. Uh, we were putting the side chat because church did see the movie. Um, he did say, quote, it is terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so we were even talking about like how Joaquin and the director had interviews where they're like, we don't even want to make this, but contracts. So I was joked about a possible, quote, unquote, not conspiracy theory, but like, would it be funny if this movie was actually this drill, if this Joker sequel movie was actually supposed to be included in WB's, in WB's um, tax write-off list? But then they had to actually release the movie since after cutting like three movies for tax write-offs, they're being investigated by the FCC or the FTC. So what if this movie was like, hey, we canceled these three movies like Batwoman, like Scooby-Doo and like another Looney Tunes movie. And they're like, oh shit, the FTC is investigating us. Fuck, this dumpster fire of a movie. We got to release it. <laughs> um, but, but, but Suicide Squad failure or not, uh, Space Marine 2. The background of my the background of my image here for those of you watching on the video on the watching our video podcast and contender of the year um one of the games uh, the game i was excited for for this year space Marine 2 is having its first dlc launch come out later this month a reminder um even before the game came out we had their one year roadmap um not one year being like to the end of the year no like a year from launch till next september so um at the end of the month we're going to get, uh, at the end of the month, we're getting some new um, character like skins, or quote unquote, studies chapters to unlock as cosmetics, which I'm happy to see. And then we're also getting a new uh, a new mission. Um, and then by the end of the year drill, we will also have a new enemy type. Um, and so a lot of Warhammer fans like me are hoping to, it's hoping it's for the Necrons, which would be an amazing addition to any Warhammer game is have the Necrons. I highly recommend you just YouTube Warhammer Necrons. Just hit search in the YouTube algorithm and you're going to get some great things. You're like, fuck, I can't wait to see these if they come to Space Marine. But yeah, so while game while games like Suicide Squad 2 are circling drain with less than 300 players, um, Space Marine 2, man, still rocking that, still rocking the 100,000 plus player count. And um, it's clearly visible why I'm probably streaming later today. And I can't wait till we get the new map and I can't wait till we get more content, uh, including, including the new enemy type coming out later this year. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, just my two cents again on it. I still think it's the, I mean, this year's gone by really fast, right? I feel like between this and t- this and hell divers, those were my favorite games this year. Easily, easily. Right. And, uh, this game out. Well, maybe buy a PS five. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, cause I played with hell divers in my front yard, uh, earlier this week. Still fun, you know what I mean. I I kind of I kind of like that I stepped away from it for a while because now like it looks like the graphics are like I mean just like some of like the the color variations are really different, kind of pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I love playing uh, with the PS5 controller on my PC. It's just it changes the entire experience, isn't it? Isn't it awesome? It's it's great. It's great. And again, man, like. I don't know, man. Like, as far as this, all this stuff coming out, like, I'm still, I'm not going to be jumping to buy a PS5 Pro. I'm still going to stick with my PC. The shit still looks awesome. Once I saw Space Marine with the stuff that I have, I said, oh, like, once, like, I was flying in space and debris was coming at me, I said, yeah, I'm going to wait to buy a PS5. <laughs> which, which, by the way, which, by the way, um, our last stream, that's right, time of recording this, my, our last stream was draw myself and Caleb, full squad, full squad of three. Uh, playing Bacon's campaign last night, and it's great, Joel, because you and I have played the campaign. So the play with Caleb, who gets to see it, oh my for the, god, for first impressions, it's I will never not get tired replaying this campaign with a new friend playing it for the first time. And dude, like Drill, you know, Bacon, you know, Bacon doesn't really have online presence. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't stream. He doesn't pod. He just, he just is a regular gamer. And even you were experiencing him saying, "Holy shit, it's just fun to play a fun game again." Like it's so refreshing yeah. to play yeah. Space Marine Two's campaign, and I'm really happy to see him playing it because you know he plays the same games as us, those cooperative shooters, and um, we'll be streaming it possibly sometime today of him beating his campaign. Like we're on the very very cusp of it, but again, um, Space Marine Two new DLC coming out, and don't you know don't feel quote unquote FOMO if you're missing out if you haven't got Space Marine Two, and you feel like oh. Um, other people bought the game, so my friends won't play with me, or the the community won't join with me. Drell's experience with the two, the Warhammer community is awesome. There's like this this fan base is so welcoming, it's so helpful. It's really funny, Drell. Like you know, you know, I'm the quote unquote I'm tour guide to Arthur, and like dude, every other player in Warhammer is like quote unquote tour guide. They'll, they'll fucking help you through it. They'll turn on the mic. I have countless. I have countless PS5 friends uh, that I have added now because of because of Warhammer Space Marine 2 because we just joined and like, yo, anybody, anybody got a mic? And it's like, fuck yeah, I do. And then bam, next thing you know, we're playing like for four hours straight with each other. Uh, we just met. So for more reasons than one, it's like the world is healing and g- gaming is coming back to normal with games like Helldivers and Space Marine 2. It gives us hope. It definitely does give us hope. So... All right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up here a little earlier, a short podcast today, but we got the Inklings out. Uh, but until next time, again, Gamers for Life podcast, each other Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, discussing all things games. I'm one of your hosts, Jarrell. With me is the OG co-host, Arthur Thomas. That's me. Take care, everybody. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.